Good morning, everybody. Um, what I want to do today um, is give you a little feel for um, my building records that I've been doing in the recent past. Um, standing buildings um, are things that people um, always have a great respect for uh, and often get terribly carried away, uh, not normally dressing up like this, um, but maybe that could feature um, as for a future TAFAC conference. Now, in Perth, um, we're well used to the buildings we've lost in the past um, from the likes of the canoe lodging um, on the Watergate in Perth, uh, Baxter's Venel down one side of McEwen's uh, store, um, Shuttlefield Close, um, part of the major uh, regeneration um, of the town. Um, and we're quite lucky um, that we have quite a good record of some of these buildings, um, in particular the recent acquisition um, of the Findlay Archive by Perthshire Society of Natural Sciences means that we have a good record um, of Dr Findlay's photographs of areas of Perth that have changed completely. Um, Pomarium, where the bus station is now, um, and even across the river in Bridge End um, with the major redevelopment of Commercial Street um, in the 70s. Um, change um, is happening all around us. Um, it often strikes me that you don't realise these things um, until you happen to be looking at photographs or slides um, when you're putting together lectures. So, for example, um, preparing one of my Whitefriars lectures, I suddenly remembered um, that we had a good view um, of the Dewar's um, distillery, um, now occupied by the Rinks. Um, and it's quite startling that such a big uh, building can just disappear off the face of the earth, um, only being recorded uh, in photographs. And looking around Perth, um, changes um, on the streets. Lindsay's the Ironmongers on South Street, um, which I well remember when I first came to Perth uh, in the late 1970s. Uh, Peddy's the Ironmongers, um, the great supplier of archaeological grid pegs, um, which has been taken over by the uh, bike shed um, and retains pretty much um, its original form um, that we were used to seeing, just being used in a different way. And the disappearance um, of entire streets, like Meal Venel uh, in Perth, which is where the St John's shopping centre still stands. And um, even right up to now, um, the refurbishment um, of St Paul's Church, um, which had stood um, for such a long time um, in a very dilapidated condition. Now, when it comes to doing um, rapid building surveys, um, we are very lucky that we have some good source material to call on. In particular, the um, digital map resource held by the National Library of Scotland online. Um, that's a fantastic uh, resource, allowing you to go right the way back through all the Ordnance Survey maps and right back to Roy's military survey. So you can get a good um, cartographic feeling for the way that places changed. The Ordnance Survey name books um, are also a very useful record um, for the use uh, and style of different buildings. Um, although, as I discovered recently, um, some of the ones for Perthshire were actually destroyed by German bombs um, in Southampton. Um, so you have to keep that in mind um, when you're looking at particular bits um, of northern Perthshire. The valuation rolls, the census, um, a very good 1769 survey of Loch Tayside. Um, occasionally, um, as we'll see later on in my talk, on-site graffiti um, can be very helpful um, for giving you um, a feeling to the former life um, of a building. And the Dean of Guild Archive, um, which holds coloured drawings um, at the very start of the submission of planning applications. Okay, so from um, the point of view of um, our towns and our urban landscape, um, we have a pretty good uh, feel for what's been going on and what we've lost. But what about the countryside? Um, a lot of my surveys, in fact, all of the ones I'm gonna show you today um, are in rural locations. Um, and it is quite striking um, as to how quickly our countryside is changing. 
But before we get to the country, on the way out, let's stop off. Um, this is the Barnhill Toll House um, beside the Dundee Road leading out of Perth. Um, I'm sure those of us that have driven past it for years, um, we were very used to it. Um, it's now in the process of being converted um, to a house. Um, there will in fact be a new house built um, down slope from it in the same location um, as Easter Cottage, which you'll see marked on the Ordnance Survey map there. Um, it's a very compact building um, and dates back to the time um, when the toll road scheme was still in use in Scotland um, and operated until 1878 um, when um, it, it stopped being used and, and just really fell into disrepair. Interestingly, the table um, of tolls that you can see in the middle photograph at the top there um, is still surviving inside the building. Um, it was previously attached to the outside wall of the structure um, and I, I did recommend that um, that should certainly be looked after um, by whatever happens to the building next. Um, on the subject of toll houses, um, it's worth remembering that there are two other surviving ones in Perth, um, one on the Edinburgh Road um, on the way out of town, um, which is converted into a house. The other one, which people may well be more familiar with, um, sits at the east end um, of Smeaton's Bridge. Um, and there were three other toll houses, um, which, as far as I can see, I've been looking and I don't think they really exist anymore. Um, there was one on the Glasgow Road, um, just across from um, the Poor House um, on the south side of the Glasgow Road. It's roughly where Rose Crescent um, has, was laid out uh, in the grounds of the Feckney Industrial School, um, which was knocked down several years ago. But you will notice on the map, um, as well as the toll house, the powder magazine um, is marked. This is where the town's gunpowder was stored um, from the mid 18th, 19th century onwards. When the town expanded west, that powder magazine was moved to where it still survives now, um, beside Fryant and Quarry, um, just up above where I live, I live um, in, in the glens. Um, so I do do a regular watching brief um, on that building. Um, what I thought I would do is look at different types um, of rural buildings. So let's start with some farms. Um, here we have um, the farm at Blair Nathort by Kinross. Um, it, these are farm steadings that are being converted um, into a house. But one thing you'll see um, that I'm beginning to notice in an awful lot of these buildings is the amount of reused um, architectural stone from other buildings, which presumably were on the site um, or it's been recycled um, from nearby. The striking thing about Blair and the Thought um, is that I was given a copy of this very nice um, black and white aerial photograph of the farm um, from the late 19th, uh, early 20th centuries. Those buildings that you can see to the right of the red arrow um, have completely gone, but if you look uh, at one of the surviving buildings on that site, there is still an 18th century marriage lintel um, which has been reused um, in one of the buildings that was rebuilt in that location. Um, so that's just um, good evidence um, for keeping your eyes open when you're wandering around these buildings. Um, the farmhouse at Rin Tool, um, which sits um, above Kinross, um, it gives you a, a really nice view down over Loch Leven, um, just on, on the foot of the Ockhill Hills here. Rintoul is interesting um, because the earliest reference to a farm on that site is from 1359. Um, and as you can see on Roy's map, um, there are several farms, um, even still there in the 18th century, um, each with their own plot of rig um, running down the, the hill slope. 
the farmhouse that I was recording before its demolition, um, probably 18th century in date, um, although quite remodelled. Um, one help I had there with trying to decide a date for it was when I noticed that the decorative um, skew putts at the end of the gables are the same as those um, on Orwell Parish Church in Milnerthort, um, which was built uh, in the late 18th century. So presumably there's a chance that Rintoul um, was built by the same architect, or at least a version of the house was. And um, bottom left here, you can see this rather nice surviving example of a tiny roof light um, for a set of stairs that have been added inside the building um, to provide access to the first floor. Um, moving along um, the Ockhills, about another three miles um, to the east, we have the wonderfully named Windy Walls uh, at Craigow, which also sits next to the evocatively named farm of a whistle bear. Um, I think we can agree that it's very windy um, on that part of the Ockhills. We have a very simple um, rectangular building, um, but again, a close look um, at certainly the, the gable ends um, and the corner coins indicate that there is quite a lot of reused stone in this building, um, including at one at least large stone which looks like it might have part um, of a carved name on it. So it might even be the part of a, a marriage stone um, from an earlier building. Um, across uh, to outside Octorada, um, quite close to Glen Eagles in fact, we have the very heavily ivy overgrown farm of Drummer Wants, um, which when you first look at it, um, doesn't really look at anything more than a 19th century farmhouse. But when you wander around the inside, you realise that the 19th century building is actually encapsulating parts of a much earlier um, T-shaped house, um, certainly probably again 18th century. Um, Drummer Wance is quite well shown um, on early maps of the area. Um, and again, having a close look at the walls, you can see blocked up doorways. And bottom left there, that's the former external face um, of the house. Uh, the bit of a giveaway there is that you can still see um, one of the drain pipes coming down from the roof. Um, up to Loch Tayside, um, again, we have a farmsteading at Clone Laws um, that is being converted um, into accommodation. Um, what's interesting about Clone Laws is that about 100 yards away um, from the steading are the ruined remains of a building that is actually shown on the 1769 survey of Loch Tayside. Um, so we have the surviving remains um, of a mid 18th century building still surviving um, on that plot. Um, if we look at estate buildings, um, probably the best example of one that I've surveyed in the recent past um, is here on the Drummond estate um, the East and West Cottages at Broadley. Um, again, this is a very simple um, single story building. Um, but I, what I find interesting is the type of construction um, of some of the internal walls. Um, here you have um, wooden boxes almost that have been filled with, with mortared rubble um, to create the internal dividing walls. And then you have some doorways that have been blocked um, with named bricks. Now, I'm a big fan of named bricks because it means that you can go to um, the Scottish Brick History website and find out when that brickworks was operating, um, which is very helpful um, for being able to get a date for that particular activity um, of the blocking. Um, so, if we move from farms to churches, um, here we have the small church of Diwali, which is 18th century, but does sit um, in the footprint of a medieval building. 
Um, this is in the process of being converted into holiday accommodation. Um, but again, um, inside the building, there are elements of the earlier church. There's a, a keystone um, with writing and part of a date on it. Um, there is a set of dukes um, on the outside wall. And rather nicely, there's a memorial plaque um, inside the church to one of the previous ministers who was drowned um, in a wreck off the Farne Islands, which we all remember as being where Grace Darling um, rescued some of the members of that ship, not, unfortunately, that particular minister. Um, back to Orwell Parish Church, which I mentioned earlier um, with helping to date Rintoul. Orwell um, is an operational church. Um, it's being reordered, which means all of the interior um, is being completely changed. And a new extension is being added out onto the back. Um, so I had to do a standing building survey uh, and then a watching brief uh, on the foundations for that extension. Um, Orwell's interesting. It is 18th century, but you've got evidence here that the roof level has been raised at least once. Um, if you look at the side wall of the building, you can probably see the change um, in the line of the building stone um, where that elevation has taken place. Um, now this is cheating because this, this is not Perth and Kinross, this is Angus, um, but uh, I thought it was worth um, introducing this one. This is the parish church um, at Panmure in Monifeith, where we actually have two buildings um, the first one is the United Presbyterian Church of 1898, which then has a second one added to it, um, which is a Church of Scotland, 1936. Um, the 1936 building um, is an interesting mix um, of brick and stone, described by John Gifford as economical Gothic, um, which is a new one on me, uh, but I quite like that as a term. Um, if we look at the two churches, the earlier United Presbyterian Church um, has been converted um, into um, a hall for the later Church of Scotland, so has lost um, all of its internal features, but um, some of the external elements of it are still visible um, in the outside walls. Um, and that gives you a slightly different um, type of recording that needs doing because you have to record um, how that building is being used in its last incarnation, if you like, um, including noting the presence of a piano. Um, the Church of Scotland, 1936, um, is also um, a very interesting building internally. Both these churches um, are going to be demolished um, and replaced by flats. Um, so this is basically a final record um, of what they look like. And the Church of Scotland Church um, has these rather nice um, stained glass windows um, that I have advised um, should be certainly retained um, or taken away and put in a museum somewhere. Um, while still on the ecclesiastical front, we have the manse at Kirk of Muir uh, near King Claven which is being converted into a house. Um, they required a full internal record of that before they took the roof off um, and stripped out the interior. Um, interesting inside that building, um, good evidence for internal uh, mouldings, some of which have fallen off the roof and smashed on the floor. Um, a rather nice leaded um, glass, stained, stained glass window. Um, and the archaeology of wallpaper, um, that's not something that I know very much about, um, but uh, maybe it'll be of use, some use uh, to somebody at some time in the future. Um, from churches, let's have a look at some mills. Um, this mill is on the back road um, from Dunkeld. Um, that uh, is on the estate of Stenton. Um, this operated as a sawmill 
um, in the 19th century and originally had another building attached on its northern side that operated as a corn mill. Um, there's only one building surviving now. Again, a lot of reused stone visible in that building. And this one has another marriage lintel, um, JS17. If you look at the listing entry, um, that date when it was listed was 1771. Um, so that's quite good evidence for quite an early surviving a mill. The mill laid still survives but it runs in a different way now um, and there is a mill pond uh, across the road and this building I think is, is really good evidence for being able to use early maps because it is very well depicted on the first edition Ordnance Survey. Um, hopping over the border into Angus again, the mill at Balgoni, um, this is being converted into a house as well um, and the giveaway that it was a mill is the fact the millstones um, still survive um, inside the building. Um, and I, like the census entry for this building in 1881, lists the eight members of the Dempster family, including one George Dempster, uh, and I wonder if he is the man or boy that incised his initials uh, beside the doorway uh, into the mill where you can see GD um, is still very visible. Um, and finally, on the Millwise, uh, this is Middle Cardney above Butterston. Um, this is a very good example of a very small um, mill that is serving the farm, which has a very complicated um, power system. The mill dam um, is up on the, the hill above um, the farm, and then there are two sluices coming down uh, to power the mill wheel um, before they feed away into a, a pond um, lower down. And that building um, was being demolished uh, and replaced with a new house. Um, I've been quite lucky in the recent past um, to have a look at some much more ornate um, upmarket, if you like, buildings. The south wing um, of Blair Castle um, is being converted, um, well in fact it's being upgraded to family accommodation, um, so there are a lot of internal alterations being made, um, which I had to record um, the parts of the building that were going to be altered. And the most striking thing for me was the survival um, of some quite remarkable carved um, woodwork uh, inside an airing cupboard um, on the first floor of the building, which presumably originally um, was not an airing cupboard, um, but proves again that you have to look in the most unlikely uh, places. Meginch Castle. Um, next to the castle is a building known as the Ballroom, um, which is also being converted um, in, into an, a more of an open um, space uh, and will operate as part of a, a weekend uh, market. This is a, an interesting building largely because of the mixture of brickwork uh, and stonework employed in, in its construction and there are several phases to it. Um, luckily enough um, I was given a photograph of a painting um, which showed that building in one of its earlier forms um, which was very helpful we were trying to understand the visible phases um, in that building. Um, and more recently, um, and rather curiously, um, these two bothies um, in the grounds of Port and Elan House on the side of Loch Tummel um, are to be demolished and replaced with holiday accommodation. Um, one of them um, is a rather nice example of some good corrugated iron um, architecture, um, a very simple uh, storage building. The other one is slightly more curious because it's more of a, a stone construction um, and there's a local rumour that this is actually where the Blair of Athol's chauffeur um, used to live. Um, Poor San Elan belonged um, to the Athol's and, and was a hunting uh, lodge, quite a big one, uh, for a very long time. But um, when I asked the former archivist uh, at Blair Castle, 
she said, well, the Duke of Athol never actually lived at Port Anaelan House, uh, so I can't quite see why his chauffeur um, would live on the estate. But there is a sense or a century um, in the 19th century for somebody staying in Port Anaelan Bothy, um, which must be this building. Um, that's a, an intriguing story. Um, and finally, on buildings, the gymnasium, uh, the old schoolhouse in Comrie. This is another corrugated iron building um, that originally was part of the school. Um, and um, I was told locally that this is where the girls used to have their dancing lessons. Um, first visible on the Ordnance Survey map in, the 18, in 1898. Um, and the bricks, again, would confirm that date. Um, they're all from Blair Adam uh, brickworks. It was then partially demolished um, and then repurposed as a store um, in the 1970s. Um, and that building um, is to be taken down um, as the rest of the house is upgraded. Now, um, in closing, I thought it was worth saying um, other things that I have found it's worth looking out for are trademarks um, from, the trade, from the Baltic timber trade um, to Scotland um, in the 19th century. These are marks that are put um, on the bits of timber at the ports um, that they are sent out from. So if you're able to locate them and record them, um, that's very useful dating evidence. However, you've got to be careful because you may remember in an early Tafak journal um, the witch marks from a house uh, in Anstruther. Um, there is always the chance that some of these marks on the timbers um, may actually be witch marks rather than trademarks. And I mentioned graffiti earlier on. Um, this is probably my favourite group of recent graffiti. Um, the names and addresses of several people who were working in the building um, and Hitler lies um, in pencil on the wall, which I think would suggest quite nicely uh, that this must be uh, dating to the Second World War. So, in summary, um, we're very lucky in Perthshire. We have a good um, resource um, of standing buildings, but they are beginning to disappear quite quickly. A lot of them are being converted, um, which is a good thing, but a lot of them are also being demolished um, and removed off the face of the earth. Now, in recent years, we will have been used to the existence of the Perth City Heritage Fund, um, which has been very useful in helping with the restoration um, of buildings in the town centre. I would suggest that maybe um, in the time of COVID, when everybody is moving out to work and live in the country, they ought to be setting up an alternative rural version of that scheme. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.